And also watch for Ellis's right uppercut. Ellis is a boxer puncher with all the blows. The jab, the left hook, straight right, the looping right. He can deck a man with either hand as he proved against Bonavina. And he can knock a man out with one punch as he proved against Johnny Pearsall on May 20, March 22, 1967 in Madison Square Garden. He knocked Pearsall, who was then apparently on the move in the heavyweight ranks, out in just one round. There is Jimmy Ellis's wife, Marietta, or at least you just saw her there, and there you see her again. Sitting next to her are two of Jimmy's brothers, Jerry and Eddie. We are coming closer to the beginning of this fight. They are, as you can see, taking off Floyd's warm-up jacket, and his warm-up pants will come next. Patterson has had a quiet confidence about this one, although still, there has been some talk, from him to this reporter at least, of defeat. He has said, if I lose to Ellis, it won't be so bad because I'll be losing to a man who carries the championship well in and out of the ring. And I think that is an obvious allusion to circumstances that you're all very familiar with in the States. We await the start of this WBA heavyweight championship bout Floyd Patterson and Jimmy Ellis. Ellis in the white trunks. Floyd in the blue trunks. Ellis, black stripe on white trunks. Floyd, white stripe on blue trunks. The bell for round one. uppercut there. No damage yet by either fighter. Ellis will not take Patterson cheaply. more than a minute left in this round one. Ellis, white trunks, Patterson, blue trunks. So far, nothing more than a feeling out round. The crowd will yell every time Floyd even seems to land. seconds left in round one. against Patterson, Ellis White Trunks, Patterson Blue Trunks. Seated at ringside, of course, are some of the great sports writers from around the world. 
Immediately next to me, Mel Derslag, syndicated columnist, Los Angeles Herald Examiner, and Milt Gross, syndicated columnist, New York Post. They are scoring this fight most unofficially. The only official score is the referee, Harold Fallon. And from time to time, because of their experience, we may allude to their scorecards as a barometer of how the fight may be being judged by the referee. Got in a good right there, as you saw, his best blow of the fight. Incidentally, the first round was scored by the two riders whom I mentioned to my left as Ellis's round. in round two. Ellis White Trunks, Patterson Blue Trunks. The action has been, as you can see, at best lukewarm up to this point. But blood from the right nostril of Ellis, the result of a Patterson right. There was a right by Ellis. Patterson's left jaw, but no damage. No, no knockdown slip. We will go to Ellis's corner after this round. Take a look at that nose. Five seconds left. Round two. The end of round two, and we're going to focus on the WBA champion, Jimmy Ellis. They are working immediately on Jimmy's nose. Not a serious cut, by the way, but they want to stop the blood flow immediately. Serious cut, the blood would start to flow into the mouth, create a problem. The crowd is roaring behind us because a young Swedish screen actress comes in between each round to hold up the round card for the forthcoming round. And you will see her later in the fight. Terribly attractive. There sits Patterson. By the way, the general consensus around me is that Patterson won the second round. The rounds would then be even if they are correct. One and one. The crowd is crying. Swedish, let's go Floyd. Round three. from Ellis's left nostril. Angie Dundee in Ellis's corner is right now talking to Cutman Chicken Ferrara about it. Two minutes left in the third round. Ellis 
has not been able to get through, to get through the peekaboo style. You see again, Patterson, with those fists up protectively in front of the face. That's the peekaboo. Patterson was hurt, was hurt by an Ellis Wright. He is hurt now. Ellis must push him off to take advantage of it. That was no knockdown slip again, but Patterson is in some trouble. One minute left in this, the third round. Perhaps you hear Angelo Dundee screaming, push him off. That's to provide punching room to Floor Patterson. That hurt. That uppercut hurt Floyd. He grunted. Perhaps you heard it. Patterson with a flurry, but not damaging. 25 seconds left in this round. Cleanly, apparently, Ellis's round, as you can see. Don Anderson is driving. We're back for round four. Ellis against Patterson. Remember, you're watching the WBA World Heavyweight Championship fight on ABC, the number one network for sports, where more people will see more sports in 1968 than on any other network. Patterson in blue. Ellis in white. Patterson in trouble in the third round, though not down. Patterson fighting back with a flurry, beginning with the left hook. and one up to this point. Good left by Patterson, and a good right too. Patterson's best combination in this fight, really, notwithstanding the blood on Ellis's nose in the first two rounds. wanted to win this fight quickly, convincingly, to establish image. Blood again. Blood again from Ellis. One minute left in this fourth round, a good round for Patterson. Patterson beginning the fight with confidence. Dundee yelling from the corner, stick him, stick him, meaning keep the left jab up. with you between these rounds because Ellis is being cut up. That's the end of round four, and if you see Ellis's face, you see a face of blood. And this crowd is going to go wild because of the way they feel about Floyd Patterson. 
and give this to Patterson. He is fighting tonight like we haven't seen him fight for a long, long time. That may relate to the way Ellis is fighting. You can't evaluate that. Not as the fight progresses. But Patterson is fighting courageously, and he is hitting well. You're looking at Ellis, the corner man working on him. Angelo Dundee, the manager. The cut man, Chicky Ferrara. Angie himself working on the cuts. Dr. Ferdy Pacheco of Miami Beach, Florida. With Dundee in boxing through all the years. Over to Patterson, who is unmarked. Who is sitting there with that stoic calm that has always been his, really, in victory or in defeat. But Floyd Patterson fighting with this crowd behind him and making himself some kind of fight up to this point. We go to round five. Patterson, Blue Trunks, Ellis White. This is a 15-rounder for the WBA version of the World Heavyweight Championship. We are in round five. The unofficial scoring, just a barometer next to me, has two rounds for Patterson, two rounds for Ellis. Damage has been done, the obvious damage to Ellis thus far. Cut over the right eye, cuts in both nostrils. Blood flowing in all but one of the first four rounds. Ellis not fighting confident, not at all. Two minutes left. I think you can see that blood on Ellis's nose for yourselves. Cut is open again. news travels fast and one of the first to hear is a member of the Allstate Insurance Company's special disaster team. A tornado in Texas, a hurricane in Florida, a windstorm in Oregon. He might get a call at any hour of the day or night to head for the trouble spot. He and other expert claims men from Allstate will be on the scene in a matter of hours. First, to set up emergency headquarters at the disaster scene, perhaps in a school gymnasium or even in a store. Then get to the Allstate policyholders and try to help them. For the homeless, find a place to stay. And most basic of all, help solve the money part so they can rebuild. For protection you can count on in an emergency, talk to the good hands people. You're in good hands with Allstate. Back for round six, Ellis White Trunks, Patterson Blue Trunks. The fight so far a surprise to the so-called boxing experts. 
Madison doing very well indeed. Unofficial scores at ringside show at two rounds apiece, one even. Madison having cut Ellis's nose almost in the beginning and having scored a cut over Ellis's right eye in the fourth round. Just to slip. Third time this fight, Patterson has slipped. No knockdowns in the bout. Ellis's white trunks covered, as you can see, with his own blood. some of the tactics that Dundee had him use against Jerry Quarry and in a strange way, perhaps reminiscent of Muhammad Ali, the sparring partner he was, as you know, for so many years. Again, there is blood out of Ellis's nose, and blood over Ellis's right eye. Don't forget, immediately after Wide World of Sports, Georgia against Tennessee from Knoxville with Chris Schenkel and Bud Wilkinson opening NCAA Game of the Year. One minute left in this, the sixth round. Blood coming out of Ellis's right eye again. Faces, his, faces now, quite frankly, is the prospect that even if he should win this fight, he will not have impressed. There are 30 seconds left in round six. Ellis is in real trouble now. Patterson is fighting light at 188 and a half. Ellis heavy at 198. And Patterson is assuming the aggressor in commanding role. heard him. There was no question about it. Now Dundee is right above us saying that Ellis work on him, work on him, work on him. But so far Ellis hasn't been able to do much work on anything. As I look at the scorecards around me, Mel Derslag, Milton Gross, nationally syndicated American columnist, the scores are by Derslag, four rounds for Patterson, two for Ellis. By Gross, three rounds for Patterson, two for Ellis, and one even. Only unofficial, just barometers. This fight will be scored only by Harold Ballins, the referee. There are no judges. And we are in round seven. I'm Bud Palmer, New York City. There seems to be some distortion with Howard Cosell's commentary from Stockholm, Sweden. We will continue. We're in the seventh round. That's Patterson in the blue trunks, who's been scoring extremely well. Turning point was the fourth round, but a hard left then by Jimmy Ellis. Patterson scored beautifully in the fourth round and has been assuming command of the fight since that time. About two minutes to go now in the seventh round. 
Patterson in blue. Seem to score again with the right hand. Of course, the crowd over there really prejudiced towards Patterson. It's hard to tell. This is live from Stockholm. And Ellis, throughout the fight, has been trying to get in that right hand, which he's noted for, but so far, Patterson has been avoiding it. This is the seventh round. Ellis is cut at the nose and the right eye. No damage to Patterson so far. Patterson was in trouble in the third round. One minute to go now in the seventh. WBA World Heavyweight Championship fight live on the satellite from Stockholm, Sweden. Patterson fighting with confidence in blue. Oh, and there's a hard right. A little high, I believe, by Ellis then. Caught Patterson high on the forehead. As I mentioned, Patterson fighting with confidence. Ellis seems confused. Final moments now of round number seven. Patterson countering after Ellis missed that combination. No damage done. And now the combination's coming from Patterson at the bell. And we'll return with more of ABC's Wide World of Sports, but after this message from our local stations. The Outcast premieres Monday, September 23rd on ABC. ringside, Howard Cosell, round eight, Ellis against Patterson, Ellis in the white trunks, they are bloodstained, Patterson in the blue, he remains unmarked, Patterson waging a surprising fight to all of us, and probably slightly ahead as we have gone thus far. Once again, there seems to be some distortion on Howard Cosell's live commentary from Stockholm, Sweden. The satellite, or the bird, is giving us a beautiful picture, but having trouble talking. So I'll carry a little bit here from New York City till we can get Howard Cosell back. In case you just joined us, this is the World Heavyweight Championship fight. Floyd Patterson in blue, Jimmy Ellis the champion in white. And so far, the fight has gone to Patterson. It turned in the fourth round when Patterson stunned Ellis with a hard right, had him in difficult trouble, and since that time, Patterson seems to be in control of the fight. Ellis fighting back in white. He's still strong. He was cut around the nose, but more serious over the right eye. Eighth round from Stockholm, Sweden, live. We're halfway through the eighth round now. Patterson more and more becoming the aggressor. Ellis still trying for the sneak right hand, has yet to land it properly. A miss then by Patterson in blue. And a miss by Ellis, leading with right. Last minute of the eighth round. 
It's been a very clean fight so far. Well handled by Harold Ballin, the referee. There are no judges. It's the referee's decision solely. And now Ella's fighting back. Right then, by Patterson, looked like it landed. And Patterson fighting and hitting the better combination seen him throw in years. Waning moments now, the eighth round. And now let's go to Chris Schenkel in Knoxville, Tennessee, getting ready for that Tennessee Georgia game. Chris? Okay, Buzz. Back at ringside for the start of round nine, Howard Cosell reporting, Ellis against Patterson, Patterson blue trunks, Ellis white trunks, Patterson in the best shape I've seen him in in years, fighting a courageous and very good fight, Ellis fighting, to put it mildly, a disappointing fight. Ellis's left eye partly closed, cut over right eye, reopened intermittently, blood flowing from the nostrils throughout the fight. In the blood from Ellis's nose, reopened almost immediately with the start of every round. Two minutes left in the ninth round. Unable to take advantage of opportunities, troubled perhaps by the people who stop. confidently with every passing round. Little less than a minute left in round nine, Patterson blue trunks, Ellis white.
fighting three different fights. From the corner, as Madison hit him with a right, but that did not damage Ellis. Getting one piece from Angelo Dundee, another piece of advice from Chris Dundee, Angie's brother, and a third piece from Sticky Farrar. As I look at the unofficial scores around me, Milton Groves has it four rounds apiece and one even, with Patterson having inflicted the greatest damage. And Mel Durslag has it four rounds Patterson, three Ellis with two even. Remember, these are just a couple of prominent columnists who keep their own scores. Nothing official. The fight is being scored by just one man, third man in the ring, Harold Vallon of New York. thus far has made scant and ineffective use of the left, the left jab and the hook. Once again, we're having a problem with the audio from Howard Cosell. This is Bud Palmer again in New York City as Patterson in the blue trunks under one minute left in round 11. Patterson unofficially out ahead in blue, staging a tremendous fight here. Patterson using his left very effectively. And great combination. Great combinations by Patterson. Still he has to watch that tremendous right hand of Ellis.
moving out. Round 12. Ellis now fighting for his life. One unofficial score next to me, Mel Derslags, says 6-3-2 Patterson. Mel Grosses says 5-4-2 Patterson. having an audio problem. Two minutes left in round 12. Ellis, white trunks, Patterson, blue. Patterson at age 33 giving the best fight of the past several years in his long boxing career. by Patterson. One minute left in round 12. Patterson has slipped four times but has not been floored in this fight. Ellis came on in that flurry. Seconds left and this the 12th round. Mercenda Stadium in suburban Stockholm for round 13, Ellis against Patterson. Between rounds, Angelo Dundee, manager trainer for Ellis, told me that Ellis's nose was broken in the first round of this fight, and he has been fighting with a broken nose ever since. Under the circumstances, the nature of Ellis's fight would be very understandable. Not an excuse. Patterson has fought a courageous fight, an effective one, a well-styled one. And Ellis has been sluggish from the beginning and has been unable to use the left effectively and unable to penetrate the peekaboo style. Under any circumstances, by our unofficial scorers around us, the fight remains close. One rider has it 5-5-2, five, five, the other 6-4-2 Patterson. One minute left, 
round 13. As people who follow boxing know, broken noses are common. And fighters have fought in one with Blood coming out of Patterson's mouth now. Patterson fighting furious. but not doing the damage to one another that the crowd believes. The end of round 13 will go to both points. Ellis's face is a mess, as you can see. And again, Dundee, Ferrara, and Pacheco go to work on it. Patterson is much less marked, but beginning to show signs of being marked and suffered a cut inside the mouth in that last round, the 13th round. on Floyd's victory. And you couldn't have found a boxing writer in this town who would have given a cent for Patterson's chances to survive the fifth round before the bout took place. course from Ellis he missed the 14th round that nose which was broken at the very beginning has been bleeding throughout the fight two minutes left in the 14th round Floyd to a right that did no damage. Under ordinary circumstances, or they might have been extraordinary had this fight ended earlier, you would be seeing the pregame show right now for the Georgia-Tennessee game, which will be coming on right after Wide World of Sports. This fight now in the 14th round, Ellis a mass of blood, Patterson fighting more confidently, steadily, one minute left in the 14th round, and at age 33, his fourth challenge in his boxing career, a good right lead by Patterson. Floyd Patterson may become the heavyweight champion again. This, the World Boxing Association version. Ellis went down. And he pulled Patterson down with him. 30 seconds left and missed the 14th round. Ellis is a bloody, pulpy mess. Patterson is virtually unmarked. The first knockdown, the only knock knockdown of the fight. Patterson to the left against Ellis. Patterson in complete control of this fight. Round 
14. Let the crowd's noise speak for the way they feel. Defeat of Archie Moore in 56 for the title. And the three bouts with Johans. A lot of suckers in between, like Rademacher and Roy Harris and all the rest. Patterson again hitting Ellis with the left. 